Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here. Uh, today we're going to be discussing a couple of things, including a couple of game recaps around the NHL, with all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Intent Hockey Channel. Now, first I'd like to kick things off by uh, just saying, don't forget to continue to like this video and subscribe down below. We're so close to 200 subscribers, so there's only 20 away. Thank you guys for all of your support. So I, I really do appreciate all of that. Uh, I do have a couple of channel announcements here. First, as you can see here, I've put my first thing in the background. Uh, I haven't put up anything in the background, but with all of this wall space, I do feel putting some things in the background will probably be beneficial to my channel. So. Hopefully this is the first of many things that I'll be putting in the background. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll put some more hockey related things in the background as well. So uh, I hope you guys uh, will like it as much as I do. But hopefully the background behind me will be filled up uh, in the next couple of weeks. And hopefully that will be quite cool to see. Uh, on top of that I do have a quick other channel announcement to make. Uh, over the past couple of weeks I've been doing game recaps uh, ahead of doing my usual news cycle video. Uh, I think I've been really hurrying through both of those ones to make sure I get a video that's relatively short, around 30 minutes done. So, I don't really want to rush through having all the game recaps on top of having to rush through all the news. So I'm going to instead do two separate videos. I'm going to do one discussing all the game reviews uh, from around the NHL. I'm going to do the other talking about my news recaps from around the NHL. So I think that might make it a little bit more easier if I'm focusing on one thing on one video and another thing on another video. So what I'll probably do is I'll continue to do my videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But I'll do one in the morning discussing some of the recaps from the last few days. On one in the afternoon or evening, uh, discussing a piece of news from around the NHL. So basically, uh, on Tuesday, I'll have an earlier morning video talking about the game recaps from Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then I'll have a news video later in the day. On Thursday, I'll have a morning recap discussing games from Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I'll have a news recap later in the day. And then on Saturday, I'll have a game recap uh, from Thursday and Friday's games. And then I'll have a later video on Saturday talking about the news. So uh, that's basically what I'm going to do from now on. So don't forget to remember to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for my videos. But also don't forget to tune in Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning or afternoonish to try and view my uh, game recap video. So we'll get to the game reviews here in this video. I'll do my other one uh, later in the day uh, talking about the news. But here we're going to talk about some of the game reviews from the last few days. So once again, starting Saturday. We've had a lot of game reviews over the past couple of days. 15 games on Saturday, then 2 on Sunday, 1 on Monday. So not very much over the past couple of days, but Saturday was a really big game. Uh, first, we had Detroit take on Ottawa. It was a really solid battle. Two teams looking to improve in their division. Both have started out fantastically at 3-1-0. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings looked really good. They were able to get 5 unanswered after Ottawa opened the scoring. They wound up winning at 5-2. to two. Detroit had a fantastic game. Uh, Dylan Larkin had a 3 point night, a goal and 2 assists. Uh, Joe Valeno scored twice in his uh, first two goals of the season. Uh, David Perron and Shin Gossiper both had a goal and assist. Mort Sider had a two assist night, while Sanderson and Greg had the goals for the Ottawa Senators in their downfall of the Red Wings. So this was a really good game. I think it was a really good test matchup for both of these teams. Uh, Corpus Al didn't look overly fantastic, and the uh, Detroit Red Wings power play unit was special putting up three PPGs. So definitely, I think Detroit looked really good. Detroit improves to 4-1-0. They look fantastic. They look like a lethal unit right now. Ottawa did look really good before. Uh, they did lose, so they're down to 3-2-0. But I expect them to do better in their next game. Uh, going over to afternoon on Saturday, and that was the Arizona Coyotes and Anaheim Ducks. It was a really uneventful game. Uh, there was definitely a couple of uh, big hits, uh, some really good saves. Jason Zucker and Michael Carcone left for the... Uh, Arizona Coyotes due to uh, injuries, so that's not overly good news for the Coyotes. But on the bright side, they did come away with a 2-1 victory. Before he left due to injuries, Jason Zucker was uh, one of the goal scorers for the Arizona Coyotes. Clayton Keller was the other. So some really good stuff there from those two guys. Uh, the lone goal scorer from the Anaheim Ducks was Fink for Toronto. Uh, Vigmelka put up a really good show in that game. Uh, the Coyotes' defense is actually top five in the league. They don't look half bad, and Vigmelka and Ingram are doing fantastic. Uh, but their offense has been iffy at times, and hopefully they can start gaining some traction with the offensive side of the puck. But in this game, they do come away with a 2-1 victory. Uh, the Ducks dropped to 1-4-0, so not really good news there for Anaheim, while Arizona was able to improve 
to a 500 record at 3-3-0. So some really good stuff there from Arizona. Uh, then we had the a, a handful of games at 4 o'clock. First, we'll get to the uh, Buffalo Sabres, New York Islanders. This was a rematch of last week's game uh, between the Sabres and Islanders last Saturday uh, when the Islanders opened the season with a 3-2 victory over the Sabres. Uh, but in this game, it was a different story. The Sabres were able to get out to a 3-0 lead. Thanks to goals from Jeff Skinner, Matias Samuelson, and Dylan Cousins. Cousins were able to extend the 3 0 lead early in the third period. Uh, that was a huge goal there. Uh, the Isles' own goal scorer would wind up being Dobson to cut the lead to 3 1, but it was too little, too late. Millstead also had two assists in this game, and the Sabres were able to come away with a huge 3 1 victory. So the Sabres, with the win, were able to cut their season record to 2 3, a game away from 500. So uh, that's not overly bad for the Sabres. For NYI, it's not ideal. It was their first regulation loss of the season after losing in overtime the previous night to the Devils. Their record drops to 2-1-1. One, one. So not overly good for the Islanders. Uh, definitely scoring once again is the problem for the Islanders in this loss. Uh, but definitely, the, the Sabres looked good. The Islanders looked alright. And I definitely think the Sabres were the team to come away with it. Sabres improved to 2-3-0. Isles dropped to 2-1-1. One, one. Uh, then we had the Canucks and the Panthers. This was a really good back and forth game. Canucks at one point had a 3-1 lead and had to come back after the Florida Panthers tied it, thanks to a goal from Andre Kuzmenko to make it a 5-3 victory for the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks were able to get a, a couple of huge points from uh, Kuzmenko and Pedersen, both have tallying a goal and assists. Uh, JT Miller had a two-assist night against Florida, while Besser, Hughes, and Carson Seuss's first as a member of the Canucks were the other three goal scorers for the Vancouver Canucks. On top of that, Florida had uh, two goals from Sam Reinhardt, and Barkov had a goal and an assist for the Panthers, with Evan Rodriguez tallying two assists. So, definitely, the Panthers had a really good game, in my opinion. Barkov had a shorthanded goal. Uh, they came back from down 3-1, so they showed their resiliency, but it was the Canucks who came away with the victory. Canucks improved to above 500 at 3-2-0, while the Panthers dropped to below 500 at 2-3-0. So, really good stuff there. Then we had a rematch of the Tampa Bay Lightning and Toronto Maple Leafs from a couple of a uh, month ago that was the first round series that saw Toronto beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games. And that one wound up finishing 4-3 in overtime for the Leafs. So the Leafs were down 3-1 in the third period. There was a couple of goals from Matthew Nyes who scored his first two regular season goals. That was a fantastic show performance from uh, Nyes after Tampa Bay took a really early 3-1 lead. And then in overtime, just like in the playoffs, John Tavares would get the OT winner for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That was a huge win for the Leafs. Major victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Almost did lose, but they do come back and win in overtime. So that's a huge win for the Leafs. Uh, Nice had a three-point night, putting up two goals. His first two regular season goals and a assist. Uh, Nylander and Tavares, who had the OT winner, both had a goal and assist. Well, Max Domi had two assists night for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Kucherov had a three-point night, two goals and an assist. For the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, Brayden Point had a couple of assists, and Bear Boulay had his first goal of the regular season for Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, the Lightning played really well. After those first few losses uh, to those division rivals in like Detroit and Ottawa, it seems like they have turned a corner. They're 1-0-2 in those last few games. So so they have are on a three-game point streak. They're not doing overly bad. But I still am concerned about their goaltending. They're still giving up a lot more goals than they should be. I mean, even though they're 1-0-2, they've not gone a game this year where they've let in less than three goals. So I am a little bit concerned about Tampa. Uh, if they keep up and they give up more than three goals each and every night, they're going to have to count on their offense to score four or more goals. I and mean, they can't score four or more goals. But every single night, that's not going to win them very many hockey games. They're 2-2-2 two, two, and two right now. I think they're very lucky to be 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Uh, But definitely, I think the, if the goaltending doesn't really shape up anymore... Tampa's going to have a pretty big trouble, but the Bulls fall 2-2-2 two, two, and, two, and continue to be at 500 right now, while the Leafs improve to 3-2-0 and, oh, and are back above 500. Uh, the Canadians played the Washington Capitals. It was a really, really cool game, uh, back and forth action. The Canadians were able to get up to a 2-0 lead, but two third-period goals from uh, Caps' Strom made it a two-all game. So that's a huge uh, goals from Strom when the Caps offense is lacking. And then later in the game, uh, Cole Caulfield was able to get the OT winner for the Montreal Canadiens. As you can see here, remember all clips are created to Sportsnet. But as you can see here, Caulfield gets the OT winner and the Canadiens are able to be sent past the Washington Capitals and get the very, very important victory. So that improved the Canadiens to 2-1-1. One, one. Uh, they're above 500. That was a huge win for the uh, Canadiens. Caps are able to get a point when they probably shouldn't have. 
and they dropped to 1-2-1, two, and one. so uh, really not good news for the Caps. Uh, their offense is still really hard to come by. Uh, Sean Monaghan and Cole Caulfield, who had the OT winner, both had a goal assist. Nick Suzuki had two assists, and Brendan Gallagher was able to get on the score sheet for the first time in this uh, season. Uh, Strom had both goals for the Caps in the OT loss. So, once again, Caps did all right to get this in overtime, but it's another loss for them. Canadians were able to get above 500, which is really surprising. The Columbus Blue Jackets were able to get a 5-4 OT victory over the Minnesota Wild on Saturday. This was a really good back-and-forth game, lots of action. The Jackets will go up 2-0, then the Wild will go up 3-2, then the Jackets will go up 4-3, then the Wild will tie it up at 4 before an OT winner from Jack Roslevic made a 5-4 victory for the Columbus Blue Jackets. In this game, they were able to get two assists from Damon Severson, including his first points as a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, and then Justin Danforth, Boone Jenner, the fourth goal of the game, which was right here, the first career NHL goal from 2023's third overall pick, Adam Fantilli, with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He had his first point, now he has his first goal. Fantilli scored the fourth goal and gave the Jackets a, a one-goal lead, and uh, that was a huge goal for him that uh, gave a 4-3 game. He also scored... As did Ken Johnson and OT winner Jack Roslevic for the Jackets. Meanwhile, for the Wild, Marcus Johansson and Dakota Mermis both had a goal and an assist for the Wild. Uh, Patrick Maroon and Joel Eriksson Eck both had two assists. Omad Zuccarello and Jonas Brodin both also scored for the Minnesota Wild and lost. So it was a really good game, close back and forth action, but the Jackets were able to come away with the victory. Uh, Jackets improved to 3 2 0. Dropping the Wild to 2 2 and 1. So it was a really good back and forth game. Good to see Fantilli get us first in the NHL. Good to see Jackets put up a really good performance. They still look decent. Uh, maybe they still have some hiccups on the defensive side. They could definitely play a little bit better defensively, but the offense looks great. So good to see that Jackets were able to do some good things there. Going over to the Flyers and Stars. This was a game I thought the Stars were able to be handily winning the, over the Flyers. Not the case. The Flyers scored three short handed goals. And this went 4-4 into overtime before the Stars were able to get the victory, uh, thanks to a OT goal from Joe Pavelski. So this was a really good back and forth game. Johnston had a three-point night, two goals and an assist. Uh, Pavelski had the OT winner. Jimmy Ben had a goal and an assist, while Hintz was the other goal scorer for the Stars. Uh, meanwhile, for the Flyers, Connecting continues his good start, scoring twice. And Cates has two assists. Sean Walker and Joel Farabee both had a goal for the Flyers in the loss. So once again, another strong performance in the Flyers. Really surprising given the fact that the Flyers I was expecting would start out really well. But the big uh, important thing to remember is that the Flyers I'm pretty sure started out with a three straight wins to begin last year. And they were like 5-3-2 at the uh, 10 game mark. They did wind up missing the playoffs by some margin. So even though they had a really good start, they eventually started to falter. I expect them to do that again this year. So even though they have a really good start, I wouldn't overly expect them to continue this start throughout the season. Uh, but definitely, Flyers and look really good. Uh, Stars continue to win. They're up to 3-0-1 now. They look fantastic. Uh, they're up to a four-game point shoot to begin the season. I know this isn't the Avalanche, who I'll get to in a second, who've done really well at the start of the year, but the Stars look pretty decent, so a really good start there for them. Uh, the Golden Knights become the first defending Stanley Cup champion to start the following season 6-0-0. They've done a phenomenal feat as the Knights improve to 6-0-0 with a 5-3 victory over the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, the Knights improved with a goal assist from Paul Cotter, a two assist night from Michael Amadio, and then tallies from uh, Nick Roy, Mark Stone, William Carlson, and Jonathan Marshall. Meanwhile, Connor Bedard, uh, Reese Johnson, and Corey Perry all scored for Chicago in the loss. It was definitely a really good game. Hawks definitely gave it to the Knights early. Uh, it was really Close, tightly contested affair early on, but the Knights were able to pull away and eventually take this game 5-3. It was a huge win for the Knights to improve to 6-0-0. There are three other defeated teams. They have the most points that have all done the defeated teams at 6-0-0. The Knights have improved to 6-0-0, while the Blackhawks dropped to 2-4-0. So some really good stuff there. Uh, the Predators had an offensive explosion. Uh, they scored five goals, being the I don't say Sharks 5-1. Uh, Novak had a two-goal game, which was solid. Uh, Luke Evangelista and Kiefer Sherwood both had a goal and an assist, which was good to see. Uh, Gustav Nyquist had two assists tonight. This goal here, in his first game, if I'm correct, uh, with the National Predators, Samuel Fagimo was able to open the scoring for National Predators. That was the first of the five goals, and it gave them a 1-0 lead. It was also his first as a member of the National Predators, so good to see Fagimo get on the score sheet there. And then on top of that, the San Jose Sharks' lone goal scorer was Thomas Hurdle. So the Sharks continued to fall 
falter, if I'm correct, they're now down to 0-4-1. Uh, the Preds improved back up to 3-3-0, so that's a solid uh, record there for the Preds. They've definitely been doing really well over the past couple of games, being able to get some offense going. So, good to see Nashville do really well. Uh, if you look at the St. Louis Blues and the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, Blues were able to break a 1-1 tie and beat the Penguins 4-2. Uh, Blues were able to get a, two goals from Brennan Saad. Kapanen and Thomas both had two assists. Well, Preco and Neighbors were the other two goal scorers with the St. Louis Blues. Well, Evgeny Malkin and Ramsey Horna were two uh, players who scored for the Penguins. Uh, it was a really good game, in my opinion. Both sides did really well. Uh, the Blues were able to come out on top. St. Louis improves to 2 1 and 1. Pittsburgh drops to 2 3 0. So, like I said, solid game. Really good for both sides. But the Penguins were able to come away with the uh, loss. Well, the Blues came away with the victory, so really good stuff there. Uh, the Avalanche and Canes did really well in a, a really good heavyweight bout uh, between each other. The Avalanche came away with a 6-4 to four victory. Uh, Logan O'Connor had another fantastic game, putting up a third straight shorthanded goal. Uh, a stat I forgot to mention about the Avalanche in a couple of my last videos. Cam Curry, if I'm correct, became the fastest player to hit 250 points in his career, only taking 241 games. Uh, the the closest one before that was Bobby Orr. I think he did in 247 games. So definitely, McCarty's had a fantastic season this year. He continues to pour on the points. Uh, but in this game for the Avalanche, Lekkonen had a four-point night, goal and three assists. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, Ryan Johansson, Logan O'Connor all had a goal and assist. Kim Carr, as we said, had two assists. With Frederick Olsen first as an Avalanche, also scoring for Colorado, and Rantanen as well scoring for Colorado in the win. Meanwhile, on the loss, uh, Slavin and Kakanyemi both had goal assists for Carolina. Nosen had two assists, and Bunting and Burns both had a uh, goal for the Canes in the loss. Canes have had some defensive issues to start the year, but hopefully I don't think it's going to be overly bad for them, and they can uh, get their act together and play a little more better defensively. But they drop to 3-3-0, while the Avalanche with the win improved to 5-0-0, so Avs are undefeated, they remain undefeated, while the Canes drop to 3-3-0. Then we had the Jets play the Oilers. Oilers got up to a 2-0 lead, but then three straight goals from the Jets, including this OT winner here for Mark Scheifele, was able to get the Jets to come from behind 3-2 victory. That's a solid win for the Jets, in my opinion. Uh, Morrissey had a goal and an assist. Nemesnikov had a goal as well as Scheifele, the OT winner, with the other one. Uh, the Oilers had two assists from both Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, with Evan Bouchard and Darnell Nurse, the two goal scorers. The Oilers continue to fall. Both teams are 1-3-0 going into this uh, game. So Jets improved to 2-3-0. Oils dropped to 1-3-1, and one. so not really overly great there for the Oilers. That was a winnable game. They could have easily had that one. So that's a really, really bad loss for the Oilers, in my opinion, to lose that game. Then the Kraken continued to fall. Even though they got their first win of the season a couple days ago, they lost 4-1 to New York Rangers. Uh, Philip Pito had a three assists tonight. Artemi Panarin scored twice. Keandre Miller had two assists. And both Alexi Lafreniere and Capo Caco, the two uh, not producing overly well first and second overall picks, both scored in this game. While Justin Schultz was the lone scorer for the Kraken. Uh, once again, Kraken fall to 1-4-1. They've not done overly well to begin the season. Uh, I really do have concerns about the Kraken. Rangers, though, with the win. Huge win for them. They improved to 3-2-0 with the victory. A huge win for the Rangers to get themselves back up uh, with another win. The Bruins also remain in the field with a huge 4-2 victory over the Los Angeles Kings. Marchand had two goals and an assist for a three-point night. Uh, David Pasternak had a goal and two assists for a three-point night. Derek Forbert had two assists. Uh, Morgan Geeky has first as a member of the Bruins win the win. While Alex Laferriere uh, scores first career NHL goal for the Kings. And Carl Grunstrom was the other goal scorer in the loss for the Kings. So really good stuff from Laferriere. First of many goals in my opinion for the Kings. Rookie uh, Bruins continue to get consistent contributions from Marshan and Pasternak. So really good stuff there from the Bruins. Uh, Bruins improved to 5-0-0, dropping the Kings to 2-3-1. Uh, going over to a couple of games that happened on Sunday. The Detroit Red Wings absolutely manhandled the Calgary Flames. 6-2 uh, to two was the final. The Brinkett had a hat-trick and an assist for a four-point night. He continues to light up the lead. I think he's the league leader in points right now. So uh, the Brink is on fire in Detroit right now. Uh, Raymond and Hull both had three assists in the win for the Detroit Red Wings. Larkin had a goal and an assist. Well, Joe Valeno and uh, Jake Wallman both also scored for the Wings. Uh, Manjiapani and Sharon Govitz first in Calgary were the two goal scorers for Calgary. Uh, so... Calgary had a really bad uh, defensive performance. Detroit continues to fire on all cylinders. Detroit improves to 5-1-0. Flames drop if I'm correct to 2-3-1. So not great news for the Flames. Need to really uh, try and reevaluate themselves. 
they're just below 500 if I'm correct, uh, but they're still not playing overly well. Uh, the wings look like they're on another planet. Uh, their offense is great, their power play is great, and they look absolutely phenomenal. And then we have the Bruins stick on the Ducks. Uh, also on Sunday, that was a really good game, but the Bruins were able to win 3-1 and improve to 5-0-0. Uh, Matthew Poitra, who was the Bruins rookie, uh, scored his first career and second career NHL goal. But as you can see here, this is his first career NHL goal. That made it a 1-1 game. He also scored the game winner to improve the game to 2-1. Uh, so uh, good things to see from Matthew Poitra. Hopefully the first of many goals. Uh, the other goal went to Brad Marchand. And Mitchell got his first point as a member of the Bruins. Meanwhile, Madison McTavish opened the scoring in the third period and was a lone scorer for the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, Ducks dropped to, if I'm correct, 1-4-0. While the Bruins improved to 5 0 0, so really good stuff there from the Bruins to see them get another win. Uh, hopefully, the Ducks can turn around the ship as after uh, starting out 1 1 0. Uh, they've now lost three straight, so hopefully, the Ducks are not going to continue to lose all of these games. And then we had a pretty interesting game yesterday between the Habs and the Sabres. Habs were able to come away with a 3 1 victory. Uh, Gallagher and Pearson both had goals and assists. For uh, the Canadians, Justin Baron opened the scoring in the first period. Uh, he was the other goal scorer for the Canadians. Meanwhile, for the Sabres, Jeff Skinner was the lone scorer for the Sabres in the loss. Uh, Canadians improved to 3 1 1. Sabres dropped to 2 4 0. A really good game for the Canes. Continue to look pretty good to start the year. Uh, Sabres. Still need to find their offensive game. Still need to really help defensively. It wasn't an overly uh, wide margin. They didn't lose by a ton, but they still lost, and they're still two games under 500. So Sabres need to figure out a way to improve their game. So that's all the game action from the last couple of days. I'll do another small uh, game review video on Thursday. Talking about Tuesday and Wednesday's games, we have a 16-game slate for later today. It's definitely a huge slate in the NHL, lots and lots of games. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes with the 16-game slate today. Uh, going over to Wednesday, we only have one game. So we'll touch on all 17 games that happen over the next two days on Thursday. That's all the game reviews over the past three days. Definitely love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, which games do you think was the best? Which teams are you surprised by the most? Uh, both by really good starts, like a Philly, like a Detroit. Uh, like Boston being undefeated. Are you surprised by any of those ones? What about surprising starts uh, on the lower end? Uh, are you surprised Edmonton's 1-3-1? Are you surprised Buffalo's 2-4-0? Are you surprised Tampa's 2-2-2? Two, two, two? Uh, definitely. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video and if you'd like to earn to subscribe down below. We're so close to your subscribers. Thank you guys for all of your support. I would never be able to do this without you. So don't forget to continue to subscribe. Also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So definitely check that out. I'll leave links down in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.